Oh my god. Good morning guys. Hope you're having an amazing day. It is being here. Today I'm in Istanbul and once again we are going to eat our way through this city. This is one of the most street food intensive cities in the world and I can't wait to show you guys what we're going to eat today. Let's go! First meal of the day and we are starting out strong straight away we are going at a place known as Sia Sofrazi. It serves some of the most unique and traditional dishes in Turkey that I don't think you can find anywhere else in Istanbul at least. I'm very excited. I've chosen four dishes that I think are really really unique and they just look exceptional. First off, when he said this I knew instantly I had to get it. It's lamb balls with cherry. I mean, what a unique combination. You can see all the little individual lamb balls and this almost like red, dark red, blood red cherry sauce. Let's go ahead and try it out. Oh. You know how everyone raves about IKEA meatballs? I would say these lamb meatballs are better. The sauce, it's so, so good. I mean, it's this like, it's watery, but it's a sort of spicy, savory, sweet sauce all at the same time. You've got the sweetness from the cherry, a bit of tartness as well. But that tartness is great because it helps to cut down on the fat from the lamb, which I love. Oh my God, that is probably some of the best meatballs in general I have ever had. You can see the cherries are like so overcooked. They are almost like disintegrating but the lamb balls, wow. The sauce is the perfect flavor to accompany the lamb because man that tart, sweet, savory, all those flavors all mixed into one. Wow this might be my favorite. All right next dish we have is one that's not really a dish it's more of a soup but he told me this is really unique because it has some mushrooms in it and these mushrooms aren't exactly very common and just looking at it you can see these mushrooms are pretty big they're like you know pretty adult sized mushrooms they are they've grown up they've lived a happy life and now they are here for me to enjoy I'm gonna get one spoonful of the soup and put the mushroom inside Yeah, I don't think I've ever tasted a mushroom like this. It is such a unique mushroom. I think it's only found here in Turkey. And that is amazing. I mean, the texture is very mushroomy, but the flavor is really light and fragrant. Next up, we have stuffed zucchini. I mean, these are stuffed to the brim with meat on the inside. It's covered in this like white, red cream sauce, I'm assuming. Let's try it out. Oh, that is so good. What's really good about this is not the zucchini. I mean, zucchini is a vegetable. No one cares about vegetables. But the meat, the meat is so flavorful. The number of spices, I don't think you can count the number of spices in there. And you can see how colorful that meat is. All the different herbs and spices and flavors in the meat. Wow, that is, I thought the lamb and cherry sauce was flavorful, I mean, the meat here is just out of this world. Finally, we have some lentil rice and the best part that there's a huge serving of fried onions on the top of the rice and I'm so excited. I'm going to go in, get some of that rice. Mm. Mm. Put fried onions on anything and it tastes good. The rice itself, it's not overcooked, it's actually got some bite, got a little bit of texture and I love that. Very oily, I love that. The lentils provide like a little bit of a contrast, a different texture to the overall dish. But wow, I have a great idea coming up. What if I put some of that lamb 
and cherry sauce on top of the onion, lentil, and rice. Oh, this is this is gonna be a heavenly bite right here. Let's try this out. Oh. Come here and get the lamb and cherry. Actually, just get all of these. People have been recommending that this place was like the best place to come. And I sort of had a bit of doubt because I was just like, I mean, how good can, you know, these dishes be? But wow, my mind is officially blown. This is so good. I think this might be the best complete meal I've had in Turkey so far. I would say that that's probably one of the best meals I have ever had. The lamb balls with the cherry, that rice. Wow, that that is honestly a life-changing meal. All right, let's go get more food. The next stop today, we are at a shop. I am very excited. This is called Balichi Lokantasi, and they specialize in fish and seafood, and their fish is super, super fresh. I got something that made quite an entrance when it came in. It was sizzling all over the place. This is their braised scorpion fish. He told me this is the best hot seller item here, and oh my god, I mean, wow. The smell, I can't even describe how good it is. You can see all these pieces of fish grilled to perfection. You have peppers, you have onions, you have all these spices on here. Oh, I'm already salivating thinking about this dish. I mean, it comes in this like super hot rock plate. So definitely don't want to touch that. We're just gonna eat what's on the inside. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I know I'm saying this a lot, but this might be the best bite I had in Istanbul so far. Every time I tell myself that, I keep telling myself that I'll probably eat something better. But wow, this fish is so good. Okay, first it's very fresh. There is no funky fish flavor to it. It is absolutely fresh out of the sea. But what really sets it apart is the flavor. You've got a all those spices, you've got cumin, you've got like, I'm pretty sure there's paprika in there. There's so many different ingredients, so many different spices. The flavor is so good. And of course the fish is oily and it releases all this oil onto the bottom of the stone plate. Oh, this is just so, so good. I'm gonna get some of the other ingredients in here. So the onions and the peppers and get it with the fish. Let's try this out. Those onions are so charred on the bottom. They're like just super, super charred onions on the bottom. And the spices, they pervade literally every ingredient in this dish. And some of the peppers, the pepper seeds, the chili seeds are still in there. So it adds a bit of that spice. Wow, I mean, the total price of this is 65 liras. But man, I am not complaining. This is so good. The fish, you said, very, very fresh catch of the day. And of course, I mean, the flavor is out of this world. The presentation is amazing. Wow, I know I'm saying this a lot today, but that was a life-changing meal right there. I mean, a scorpion fish. I don't even know what a scorpion fish looks like. I've never even heard of a scorpion fish. But he said it was good. I gave it a try and wow, that's, that's the best fish I think I've ever had in my life. Now, prior to this meal, I would say that the best fish was in Mandalay when we had that lemon fish. Let's give this a try. My God, that just blew it out of the water. That was the absolute best fish I've ever had. That char grilled flavor, those caramelized onions on the bottom. Wow. What really shocks me is the fact that this store is in this residential neighborhood. It's on the bottom floor of a, an apartment. So imagine if you are the one living on the second or third floor and every day you're just smelling that grilled fish when you wake up in the morning. And then for dinner, you just casually decide to pop in to have some of the best fish in the world. Wow, man, Turkish people are so dang lucky. If I'm gonna move to Istanbul, I'm gonna live right upstairs from that restaurant because that is amazing. 
Yeah. 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 Double roast pistachio and the Turkish delight. Can you try this? You try? Yeah. One apricot. Yeah, just one apricot. Yes. And then I think I'll try the uh, fatty, fatty samasi. Okay. One portion. Yeah, just one portion. Okay. Yeah, I think that. Just sit down, please, yeah. outside. Yeah. yeah, outside. Okay. Thank you. All right, after such a greasy fish dish, you gotta get some sweets. I've come to a very traditional shop known as Sekerchi Kafir Erol. It is, by many Istanbul standards, the best sweet shop in the entire city, possibly in all of Turkey. And I've heard so many Istanbulites talk about how great this place is. It's been open for over 200 years. It was established in 1807 and the owner inside was telling me that they've passed it down for seven generations using the same recipes, same ingredients. Wow, I couldn't be more excited. I've gotten two things. First one is a apricot marzipan. I'm not exactly sure what a marzipan is supposed to taste like, but uh, I'm sure this sets the standard. So let's see how this goes. That super, super sweetness. Oh, wow. If you're not a fan of like really, really sweet, this might be too much for you, but if you want to give this to kids, wow, they would love this. This is literally packed sugar. Now mine is uh, apricot flavored. So as you can tell, it's also apricot shaped, but there are so many different flavors and so many different fruits that they have for the marzipan. So it's completely up to you what you want to get. Next up is a dessert called Fati Samarsi. When I asked the guy what the translation is or what it is, um, he couldn't really say. So this is a mystery Turkish dessert, which makes me all the more excited. It's like this big doughy Swiss roll almost with pistachios inside, almonds on top. I mean, I, I am so excited. I'm just gonna cut a piece. All right, let's try this out. Oh. Oh. It's almost like Tris Leches in my opinion because it's like this cake which is submerged in this syrupy sweet sauce. It's not milk, not like Tris Leches in that sense, but the cake is so soft, it's so liquidy almost. Yet at the same time, it maintains that sort of cakey, bouncy texture. On the inside, you've got so many nuts. Like, I can't even name how many nuts there are. That's probably the best Turkish dessert I've had since coming to Istanbul. And I know I'm saying that about everything today, but seriously, Asian side of Istanbul food is currently just destroying European side Istanbul food. So I can only have good things to say about this. Well, I don't think that I've ever had such a delicious piece of cake ever. That was one of my favorite desserts that I've ever had in my life. Really, really delicious. If you come here, it's a 200 year old store for a reason and it's for a good reason. I can assure you of that. Come here and try that out. But now after all those calories, I need to work it off. I'm gonna go for a little walk. And then afterwards, when I do eat again, I will see you guys later. Night has fallen over Istanbul and we've come to one of the most famous schools here. This is Kizil Kayalar. This is a stop that Anthony Bourdain came to. It's right smack next to Taksim Square. But it's a burger, it's a wet burger with some mystery meat inside. I have no clue what's gonna happen, but let's try this out. Mm. That's definitely a very wet burger. It's like soaked. And this tomato sauce, it's more tomato-y than it is everything. The tomato flavor is very prominent. The meat, I don't know what sort of meat it is. I just know that it's very soft, probably artificial, and not like a kofta or a kebab. But, I mean, this is a very unique 
thing to Taksim Square, specifically this stall. I mean, it's just soaked up all this tomato sauce. You can tell how red it is right now. The meat is very thin layer. The bread is very thick, but the bread is really soaked. So it's really, really soft, mushy bread. So it doesn't really affect the texture. Wow, yeah, I mean, that's definitely one hell of a wet burger. It's a good afternoon snack, good evening snack, a good anytime snack, honestly. But, wow, yeah, really, really unique. Oh yeah, that store is packed inside. It's super, super busy. But yeah, the burger's a nice little snack. It's a little wet with that tomato sauce, a really, really strong tomato sauce. But super busy all the time. Every time I pass by here, it's always a long line. And I think it's good for good reason. The irony is that there's a Burger King right around here as well. So I don't know exactly what Burger King was thinking trying to build a burger store next to that one. But um, yeah, business strategies, huh? I give you for one uh, double Adana. Okay? No, no, no. Adana. Adana is lemon with mixed special meat. I'll skip. Okay. Vita na Adana, you know. This next stop is one that I'm very excited about. This is a place known as Durum Zade. It's also a place that Anthony Bourdain went to and I just got an Adana wrap. Adana is like the spicy donor that they have and wow, not only were they the friendliest people inside, but they were so skillful with the way they were cooking this. Just by smelling it, the smell that comes closest to resembling this is the murtabak I had back in Singapore. I think that it's the closest way I can describe the smell at least. But you can see there's onions, there's tomatoes, and of course there's the meat inside. Yes. Very good, very good. Yes. yes. Is it? <laughs> I haven't tried it out yet. <laughs> Alright, all right. we have to give this a try. This looks so, so delicious. Mm -hmm. This may smell like murtabak, but it is literally a thousand times better. Oh my god, the ingredients in here, the lamb is so smoky, it's char grilled, it's perfect. And the lamb layers are so, so thin. You could see it when they were making them, how thin the layers of lamb were on those kebab sticks. And then the onions, the parsley, all those ingredients were delicious. And they're topped off with a bit of lemon juice. You can get that hint of that acidity, that sourness to help cut down on all that fat from the lamb. Of course, the only thing wrapping this all together is the bread. And let me just say, the bread, it's crispy on the outside, soft and fluffy on the inside, and most importantly, the flavor of the bread. He literally cooks it over the charcoal with the juices from the meat flowing into it. It's literally become like a plastic bag that holds everything together and absorbs everything and is doing such a good job of absorbing everything. Wow, the ingredients are so fresh. Everything is cooked to perfection. Although it's supposed to be the Adana donor, which is supposed to be spicy, I do get a hint of spice, but I won't say that it's like the spiciest thing in the world. Definitely super manageable, really, really delicious. Wow, that is mouth-wateringly good. I mean, the meat itself, you can literally see how thin the layers are, the onions, all the vegetables, all having this crunch, this freshness to it. Wow, I think this right here, I think this right here might be the best donor I've had in Istanbul. It might be the best one in Turkey. That right there is just such an amazingly perfect meal. The friendliest people, seriously. The cook, super friendly, the owner, super friendly, and the most delicious donor kebab. I mean, seriously, it is such a good kebab. And the fact that the people who make it are so nice, so accommodating, so sweet, just makes it so much better. 25 liras gets you that entire roll. And wow, I could not be happier. The best part of the donut kebab is at the very bottom when all the juices from the top drip down. Literally, when I finished the donut kebab, my hands were all juicy because of all that lamb juice just dripping through the sandwich so 
Wow, that is definitely, definitely a donut kebab to remember. Right. Double, double good, okay? Yes. And then what is that? Kemal Pasha. Pastry. Pastry? Yeah. I'll take one of that as well. Okay. And then what pudding? Rice pudding. Uh, what's the yellow one? Custom. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla Sorry? Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll take the custard. Custard and chicken breast and that one. Yes. What are you doing? We finally made it to our last stop for tonight. This is a place known as Oskonak Restaurant. And I've heard that the desserts here are spectacular. We've got three desserts and I am very hungry. So we're going to see if we can finish them all. First one we have here is something called Tavuk Goksu. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there is cinnamon on top. It smells really, really nice. Let's go ahead and dig in. Oh, wow. That's like a very mochi-esque texture with cinnamon on top. Yeah, that's like a really sticky, imagine if it was like sticky mochi and marshmallow together with cinnamon. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, this is like honestly a mix between marshmallow and mochi. Put some cinnamon on top. That's literally the best way to describe it. But wow, that is so delicious. Oh man, it's so simple. It's such simple ingredients, but the, um, the result is just spectacular. Next, we have a vanilla custard, and there's some uh, nuts on top, a ground up nuts, but I'm very excited. This also looks amazing. Go ahead, dig in. Oh, let's try this out. Oh! Oh, I love that. That is so good. The nuts provides it like a little bit of like a flaky texture, but the custard, let's talk about the custard because that custard is the star. The texture is really, really liquidy. It is so silky smooth. It is so smooth. It's like tofu smooth. And the sweetness, that egg vanilla sort of flavor. Oh, that is so good. But man, that texture is really what's, that, that's what's really making this pudding unique. It is so, so smooth. It's almost like drinking something that's a little bit solidified. Even if you didn't have the nuts, even if you have an allergy with nuts, you can only eat the pudding. Wow, that would still be so satisfying because, yeah, this is like a mix between liquid and solid. You don't even know what it is, and it's still so delicious. Finally, there's this pastry I don't know the name of. You can look at it right here. If you are a Turk and you know what the name of this is, feel free to comment down below. He told me the name. I forgot. We're gonna do our best to try and talk through this. This is cream on the top. Um, and he said that this was some like traditional Turkish pastry. So we're gonna go cut it in half. Try it out. Oh. It looks like gulab jamun and it kind of tastes like gulab jamun, but it's not the same. Gulab jamun is really, really sweet. This is not as sweet as gulab jamun and gulab jamun has like a rose syrup. This isn't a rose syrup. In addition, the texture is a little bit more flaky than a gulab jamun. It's not as sticky as a gulab jamun. But wow, there are a lot of similar characteristics to gulab jamun. I think, yeah, the most similar dessert would be gulab jamun. But there's still a lot of differences between that. And the cream, the cream on top is really the cream of the crop because that makes it so delicious. That cream helps to like cut down on the sugary syrup, if that makes sense. But wow, yes. I mean, it smells so good. I'm just entering your mouth. 
it's not too sweet. It is the perfect amount of sweetness. Sometimes, yeah. you know, gulab jamun is a little bit overwhelming. It's too sweet. This is the perfect amount of sweetness. For me, every single dessert has been amazing. Vanilla pudding is my favorite. I love this vanilla pudding. Um, but wow, it's all so good here. I am really, really impressed. I was not expecting this. And like, these are really traditional Turkish desserts, but people don't know about them. You know, people think about baklava or kunefe, but these are also very traditional Turkish desserts that people here do enjoy. So I'm really glad that I could showcase these local desserts because this is something that you can't really find anywhere else in Istanbul or even in Turkey. Wow. That was just such a delicious dessert. Total for three of them was 42, which means each one was 14 liras. A bit on the pricey side, but wow, definitely worth it. Today has been an amazing food day, as you can probably tell. Everything was just beautiful, perfect. Some of the best I've ever had ever in my life. It was so, so delicious. And I was so glad I could take you guys with me. I mean, whether it was that grilled fish in the Asia side or the donor kebab just now. Overall, really, really good. Istanbul keeps surprising me with the food scene. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos. I will see you guys on the next video. Bye guys.